and the scary sleepover. Daniel in the lion's den from Daniel 6. Things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home, and now they were slaves of the king of Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them, and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed him. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things. So it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was. So he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel. So they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel, things they could tell the king, things they could... But there weren't any. None. They couldn't find anything at all. Except there was just the one thing. Every day, three times a day, without fail, no matter what, Daniel went to his room, closed the door and prayed. They smiled to themselves. 
Let's get the king to make a law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except to the king. Daniel won't obey this law and he will be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever and hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know they were tricking him. So he made it into a law. Everyone must pray only to me. If you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. He had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. So Daniel went to his room, closed the door and prayed. That's just what the bad men knew Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king, Oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, does it not, that everyone must pray to you alone, sire? Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we are wrong, but... It would seem that Daniel is praying to God, not to you. The king was sad. He had been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he couldn't change his law. And so he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lions. May your God, who you love so much, rescue you, the king said. The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night, not a wink. He tossed and turned until finally, at the first glimmer of dawn, he leaped out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths. And there... Resting his head on Daniel's lap was the biggest lion, purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people and the time was coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. And together they would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. Welcome to our special Daniel Quiz. Here are three questions about the story of Daniel. You are going to need to concentrate really hard. Are you ready? Here are the rules. I will show you two answers. If you think the answer is A, then wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. If you think the answer is B, then put your hands on your head and keep them still. Right, let's begin. Question one. What was Daniel in the den with? Was it A, a lion? Or B, a tiger? If you answered a lion's, then wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. If your answer was tigers, then put your hands on your head and keep them still. If you said he was in the den with the lions, then you are 100% correct. Well done.
Question number two. Did Daniel defend himself from the lions with the sword or with the power of God? If your answer was sword, then wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. If your answer was with the power of God, then put your hands on your head and keep them still. If you said he was protected by the power of God, then you are correct. Well done. <laughs> Question three. Was the king happy or sad that God rescued Daniel? If your answer was happy, then wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. If your answer was sad, then put your hands on your head. If you answered, the king was happy, then you were right. Well done. <laughs> Boys and girls, I hope you had a great time playing this game and always trust that God will always protect you. Bye. So, how did you enjoy the game? How many of the questions did you get right? So, boys and girls, what was your favorite part of the story? Mine was the fact that God is so faithful. God never let Daniel down. He stuck with Daniel. And even though there were people who were lying, people who were trying to trick the king, and they did trick the king, and so much so that the king couldn't change the law. So once they had put in the law that only he must be prayed to or served, that he couldn't change the law. And that's why the king was so sad when they found out that Daniel had to go to the lion's den. And he couldn't sleep because he was so worried about Daniel because the king loved Daniel. Now, when Daniel comes out of the den with not a scratch on his body, because the angel closed the mouths of the lions. Everyone who didn't even know about God, then knew about God. So while these people were trying to lie and be deceitful, what they actually ended up doing was glorifying God even more. It gave God an opportunity to be glorified. And the king then says that everyone should worship God of Daniel and I would imagine that that also included the king himself because it sounds like the king didn't even know about God and so Daniel really changed the whole kingdom of Babylon by going into the den and surviving it with God's power isn't that amazing isn't that amazing how God took a hopeless situation, a situation where most of us would have just been like, oh gosh, I'm now done for. And he takes that situation and he turns it around and even more people know about him. So I just love that God can take any situation that you are in and he can turn it around and it can be for the good, which will also glorify God. So I absolutely loved it. The other part that it doesn't really talk about this in the story is that the the guys that were trying who tricked the king and were trying to get Daniel uh, to be put in the lion's den and eaten alive, guess what? They got exactly that punishment. And 
Daniel didn't have to plan or plot a revenge uh, because he knew who had tricked the king and he knew that those people were trying to get him killed. But he didn't worry about that. He just put his focus and love to God and God fought for Daniel. And those guys that were plotting against Daniel ended up in the lion's den and being eaten. So God will always fight for you. God will always come to the rescue for his servants. No matter what that looks like. I hope you boys and girls really enjoy the story. I know that I have. Okay. And I'll see you guys next week. But before I go, let us pray. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you every time, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are always there to want to rescue us. Help us, Lord, to give you our hearts wholeheartedly, just like Daniel did. That we will pray to you in all times of needs. And that you will send angels to protect us, like you did with Daniel. So we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.